I'm examining this gallium nitrate fat evaluation board from Texas Instruments and while I was looking at the circuit that generates the dead time something occurred to me. I had a look at what's here and I realized that I had seen that same schematic uh, in the Art of Electronics in the third edition. You'll find a setup that's virtually the same as what we're seeing on the Texas Instruments designs. What we see here is a CMOS buffer an RC circuit that introduces a delay and another buffer so that this uh, RC circuit is not loaded and uh, works perfectly reliable whatever the load is. Uh, what do we see here? The same thing we see that buffer it's an inverter in this case but that doesn't matter we see the same RC circuit and we see another buffer inverter the only thing that Texas Instruments has done differently is that they have put a diode over the resistor and we'll go into that. This is the circuit we're talking about. So what it does is that for each flank this circuit will add a RC time, an RC delay to the signal and then the second uh, CMOS buffer has a uh, Schmidt trigger uh, effect and it will go high at a certain point in that ramp. So it will uh, generate a predictable delay. Now uh, this circuit from uh, the Art of Electronics is uh, symmetrical, so it will introduce a delay at the rising edge and at the falling edge. But Texas Instruments example, they needed a asymmetrical uh, design, so they only needed a delay at one edge and they didn't want a delay at the other edge. And that's why they have put this Scott key diode here on, in parallel with the resistor. They've chosen the Scott key diode because that's a, a fast switching one. So it uh, affects the circuit immediately without uh, significant delays. And what's happening in their, in their uh, schematic is that when this signal goes high, the diode is in uh, conduction and it will bridge the, the resistor. So we don't have a real RC delay because the R part is zero. And that means that that flank is not delayed. So we will have the exact same time as if there was no RC circuit. And on the, on the other edge, when this signal goes low, uh, then the diode will not conduct, the resistor is in place and we will have a delay. The inverter here has the same effect as the CMOS buffer here. It will do a Smith trigger effect and it will, at a given fixed voltage, it will switch uh, over the output. You can find that back on the schematic here. The purpose is to build two different signals uh, from a single PWM uh, signal. So we give, we give a PWM signal on the input and we want to have a signal where the rising edges are slightly uh, delayed. And we have two traces here. We have the low trace, which I have drawn on the top of the image, which is a bit counterintuitive and we have the high part of the schematic and let's see what's happening here the first thing that happens is that we build inverted signals so this inverter is there this inverter is not there so we will have perfectly inverted signals here at this part then the part of the circuit that introduces delay is there so we just explained that it will only put a delay there in one of the two edges you can see that here in the drawing that I've taken that this edge is straight and the falling edge is it's got an RC, an RC component and on the other side it's just the other way around uh, not really but uh, conceptually so also that falling edge has an RC uh, component the rising edge is straight so in essence these are the same signals but shifted in time then the Schmidt trigger and the inverter invert that signal and we have what we want we have an uh, uh, a high and a low signal that are opposites and also have a slightly delayed uh, rising edge. And let's see what that does with the signals. So you can find here uh, the whole trace from the input to the output uh, numbered and you find the same things back on the schematic that I've drawn here. So on the input we get a pure uh, PWM signal. Then at point Two, I'm going through the low part first, so I'm following this trace here. On point two, we get a perfect invert of that uh, signal. Point three is where we introduce the dead time, so the uh, rising edges will be straight and the falling edges will have that RC component. 
and that is what you see here before the before the RC and after the RC component so you see here that the rising edges are the same and the falling edges have that uh, RC component they have that delay and then the last image is after the last inverter and buffer so we have a Schmidt trigger effect here uh, the falling edge stays uh, stays the same but inverted the rising edge gets active when that Schmidt trigger threshold is reached so we go high here at a given time at a given part of that RC delay and the other side is the opposite so uh, what doesn't happen is that we already invert the signal here at the beginning so we get the same signal as at point 2 so what we see here is that the input signal that has already been inverted by this first inverter here is exactly the same as the signal that we're feeding into the RC circuit the RC circuit does its magic and puts the delays only in the falling edges because the rising edges are bypassed by this diode and then the last inverter Schmidt trigger also cleans up that signal and gives us a delayed rising edge and a in-sync falling edge and the end result is what we see here on the drawing so these are the two signals uh, on top of each other with the same timelines falling edge no delay rising edge introduces a delay and that's how Texas Instruments managed to get to that time hey, and it's nice to see that the writers of the art of electronics have kept their promise they're saying here let's take a short detour and try to step away from the theoretical part and look at some real circuits and the first real circuit that they are publishing uh, is one that's used in practical examples and that we can find back in the real world